Looking to create a Facebook group for your business? This can either be a total waste of time or a total gold mine of leads, sales, and signups. My mom and I have grown our Facebook group to over 10,000 members. And today it is the most profitable part of our social media strategy for our seven figure business. In this video, I'm gonna share nine mistakes you must avoid if you want your new group to work for you instead of slowing you down. Hey there, I'm Jordan Maley, co-founder of the Global Freedom Community alongside my mom and business partner, Kathy Schneider, where we help female entrepreneurs create laptop lifestyle using profitable habits and evergreen marketing strategies so you can create consistent, repeatable revenue on autopilot while living the lifestyle of your dreams. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We put out great new videos just like this one every single week, and I don't want you to miss the next free training we release. When my mom and I launched our personal brand back in 2017, our Facebook group was the first strategy we put in place. What we put out there on social media is so public, and we look at our group as a place where we get to really build relationships with our most engaged followers. While Instagram, YouTube, and our Facebook business page and profiles feel like a platform where we get to talk to people, our group is a place where we get to really build a community. Today, our Facebook group is by far the most profitable piece of our social media marketing strategy, but we still hear clients worry about how to get the most out of their group, feeling like it's a burden, like it's just another place that they need to show up and post rather than a place that's really growing their audience, nurturing and converting sales. And it's true. Many groups end up feeling this way because they aren't set up and executed properly. I'm going to help you avoid all of that today, so let's dive in. The first mistake you need to avoid when setting up your group is not naming it something that your target market is actually searching for, along with a short tagline that explains why they would want to join. Let me show you what I mean. When we launched our group, we named it the Global Freedom Community. I mean, that's our brand name. It kind of makes sense, right? But here's the thing. Facebook works like a search engine, both for its users within the platform and on Google. It also recommends groups to users who would get value out of the group based on their preferences and other actions that they take within the Facebook platform. If someone types a term into the Facebook search bar, they can view and join groups that fit the interests they're looking for. No one was searching for the global freedom community. And if Facebook recommended it to them, they would have no way of knowing who the group was for or what they would get out of it based on that name. When we changed the name of our group from global freedom community to female entrepreneurs attract and convert more sales, the organic growth of our group skyrocketed. It didn't happen overnight, but 90 days into this change, we started having new members finding and joining our group every single day, which is absolutely amazing. So when creating a name for your group, think about your niche. Who do you help and how do you help them? And if you need help nailing this down, be sure to check out this video that my mom and I created all around helping you find and identify your target audience. The second mistake we see people make along this same line is that they're not creating a description that further elaborates on who the group is for and how it helps them. When a group is found through a search or recommended to someone, the first couple of sentences of the description are visible before someone even clicks on the group. So think of this kind of like a Google search. The name of your group is like the title and the description is the preview, that little one or two sentences that tell you whether or not you actually want to click on that link and go check it out. Mistake number three is creating a cover photo that is just a billboard for yourself versus for your group members. Again, this is something that's visible before someone even joins your group, meaning before your new members know you or are aware of how you can really help them. So when someone finds your group through a search or they have it recommended to them by Facebook, they can click on the link and then they see a preview of that group before they decide to join. 
This preview shows them the cover photo and the description. So our advice is to repeat the group name and tagline in the cover photo so that when someone clicks on the group name, they feel it is super congruent with the link they just clicked on. This is going to vastly increase the number of people who actually request to join your group after clicking on it. Mistake number four is not making your group private. A public group means anyone can join without being approved by you, the group owner. Also, it means that they can see all the posts before they join. Making your group private keeps it a safe place for your group members, which is incredibly important for your long-term growth. It allows you to keep out spammers and people who might abuse or take advantage of the people within your group. Anyone can still request to join if it's set as private, but they must be approved by you in order to gain access. We saw this firsthand how important it was when a couple of years ago, our group link somehow got shared with a bunch of spammers. For over two weeks, we were getting over 200 new member requests a day, uh, which would have been great, except they weren't real people. Every new request was actually a bot meant to infiltrate our group and take advantage of our members. It was pretty obvious because the profile photos were all a bunch of fake stock photos and the names weren't real names. So thankfully it was easy for us to see that these weren't real people. And because our group was set to private, we were able to decline every single membership request and our members never even knew it happened. Mistake number five is not creating rules. Again, this comes down to protecting your group members. You can use the rules that Facebook provides or create your own. We have four rules in our group, which are be kind and courteous, no hate speech or bullying, no promotions or spam, and respect everyone's privacy. Pretty basic, right? But when someone violates a rule, we can send a message to them directly through the group along with a copy of the rules. And this serves as a warning, and if they break that rule again, we can easily kick them out. All right, that covers the biggest mistakes we see people make when creating and setting up their group. Now I wanna talk about mistakes that we see people make when it comes to posting and interacting with their group members. Mistake number six is forgetting the 80-20 rule. Inside your group, you want your post to be 80% value and 20% promotion. Value posts are posts that entertain, educate, or inspire your audience. These are posts that are gonna keep your members in and keep them engaged. Mistake number seven is not showing up for your community. I mean, look, we love automation, but remember, people buy from people. Be a human first and a marketer second. And the reason we love automation is because it allows us to show up authentically and build relationships with our community knowing we have funnels and systems working behind the scenes to sell for us. Having these funnels and systems in place doesn't mean that you don't have to show up. It means you get to show up, and that is the big difference. So yes, automate some of your posts. Set up systems to automatically add members to your email list if they request that from you. But show up reply to comments, reply to the comments and the replies on those comments, okay? Spend time every single day interacting and engaging with your community. Mistake number eight is not allowing some fun in your group, okay? My mom and I were kind of all business most of the time and we really made this mistake early on when we were first starting our group. When we started using daily engagement posts on these fun, kind of silly topics, our group engagement went through the roof. This is huge because a highly engaged group is more likely to show up at the top of the Facebook search results, it's more likely to be recommended by Facebook, and it's more likely to show in the news feed of the current members. This means when you do have something to sell, your posts are going to be seen. So yes, share value, educate, but don't forget, people come to social media to be entertained and have fun. So make your group a place where they can do that. The final tip, tip number nine, is about sales. You're not gonna sell in your group if you don't sell in your group. And what I mean is you need to have a sales strategy in place if you want your group to actually drive leads, sales, and signups for your business. This starts by having a profit system in place. 
a strategy to attract, capture, convert, and upgrade your audience using funnels that allow you to sell consistently and on autopilot. If you want to see the exact blueprint we followed to go from social media nobodies to hitting $300,000 in sales in our business, my mom and I created a full 60-minute training, which you can watch at globalfreedomcommunity.com forward slash free training. Inside, we show you how to effortlessly attract, capture, and convert your ideal clients and customers and trade busy work and overwhelm for a simple, proven profit plan that allows you to get sales and get paid while you work to build your audience. This system is what powers all of the profits inside of our Facebook group. So head on over to globalfreedomcommunity.com forward slash free training to watch it now. If you want to see the exact post we use to get sales inside of our group using our profit system, check out this video. Just don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go so you'll be notified the next time we release a new training like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.